May I now turn to Mr. Lin Zhao, the Secretary General of ITU, and uh, at the heart of uh, this noble effort of the Broadband Commission. It's your floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, President, for your very kind words. So, Mr. President, also Mr. Carl Slim, and my dear colleague, uh, Madam Irina Bukova, uh, dear commissioners, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Let me offer you a very warm welcome to this uh, YALA Club. And a thanks to each and every one of you for joining us here today. On behalf of us all, I would uh, especially like to welcome the new commissioners here today, bringing all their ideas, insights, resources, and energy to the cause of broadband for sustainable development. By the word uh, new, I mean those uh, who joined us uh, for the first time this year, and for those uh, who started to join us for the first time at the beginning of this year, because this year we had uh, our spring session in Dubai, and some of uh, new commissioners all joined us, and uh, some other new commissioners could not join us at the Dubai, but join us for the first time, real first time here. So I would, uh, President, I would like to take this uh, moment uh, just to introduce uh, these uh, new commissioners uh, to our co-chairmen. Let me start uh, from this side. I think that uh, Rajiv Suri from uh, CEO from uh, Nokia, and uh, Mr. Salem Weiss, the governor of uh, Saudi uh, Telecom Authority Agencies. Yeah. And then we have uh, also uh, Rupert uh, Pierce, the CEO of uh, Imaset. And uh, further down, I think that uh, we have uh, Madame Cathy Nivella, Nivelli, the Under Secretary of uh, State Department of uh, United States. And uh, further down, let me see that uh, who are new, completely new to us. I think that uh, then we come to, I think that uh, Mr. Masui from uh, UAE, the Director General of uh, uh, also regulated agencies. And then we have uh, Madam Anusha uh, Rahman Khan, the Minister from uh, Pakistani Administration. I think that we also have uh, Mr. Karia from OECD, that is the first time you know, that I saw you at our meeting. Of course, you are, all, you are not new to us, you are already commissioners. And we have also a uh, um, minister from Azerbaijan, that, uh, Mr. Ramin Gulazeda. I think that we have uh, also Mats, uh, the GSMA uh, Director General, who joined us for the first time in this year, and uh, Scoot, the CEO of uh, Zan, to join us. But they are already there at our Dubai meetings. And also, I think that we have uh, Jane Guervan from uh, Intel, who replaced uh, our friend uh, who retired now. I think that uh, then it's uh, Jean Yves uh, uh, Chatelier, that the CEO of uh, Vembacom. And of course, uh, I think that uh, my, my, my Spanish uh, vice minister is already here before, so that I don't need to. Uh, otherwise, uh, if I miss uh, anybody, you know, please uh, raise your hand. But uh, anyhow, these are new commissioners who join us uh, starting from beginning of this year. So welcome you all. The Dubai meeting was one of uh, our most productive and engaged meetings to date. And I would like to take this opportunity once again to thank Sonny Vaki and the GMS Foundation for their excellent welcome and all the work they put into it. The meeting resulted in a number of innovative ideas and outputs, including a proposal for the commission to develop national digital scorecards. Over recent months, Due to their changes, several commissioners have retired from their post or changed their positions. Therefore, and very regrettably, they are no longer with us, including Hans 
Westbeck from Ericsson, and uh, Gordon Grealish from Intel. We thank them for their invaluable and lasting contribution to the work of this commission. Ladies and gentlemen, I also wish to thank you for your very active participation in preparing, preparing this year's State of Broadband report. I understand that it was benefited from many inputs and a large number of you took the time to review and comment on the draft report. I would really like to thank all of you personally. It is your energy and your effort which has resulted in such a comprehensive set of perspectives and insights into the state of broadband globally, which makes for such interesting reading. As part of the preparations for this year's State of Broadband report, I'm pleased to report ITU has carried out the final evaluation for the Commission's targets. We estimate that around half of the Commission's targets were achieved by the end of 2015. There has been a significant increase in the number of countries with the national broadband plan that is targeted number one over the lifetime of the commission. Although growth in this number of countries has stabilized recently, today over three quarters of all countries have some form of national broadband plan or ICT strategy, up from just over 100 in 2010, actually it's 102, in 2010. We are now seeing the next evolution of uh, NBGP, National Broadband Plans, with a growing number of countries extending their national broadband plans to take into account privacy, confidentiality, and ownership of data, or the Internet of Things, which with IoT rule maps. Concerning target two, the affordability, we have seen mixed progress. Some 83 developing countries have achieved the Broadband Commission's affordability target of offering basic fixed broadband services at under 5% of monthly GNI per capita. But only five LDCs out of 48 have achieved this target. The target number three for household internet access was achieved by the end of 2015, with 41% of household connected globally against the target of 40%. So we had to really good progress. Target number four for individual internet access, however, was not achieved by the end of 2015. Also, the target of 15% penetration in ADCs should be achieved by the end of this year. Finally, for the target for gender equality in access to broadband, target five, we have actually seen some indications that the digital gender divide might be growing, not reducing. My colleague Irina already mentioned. Given everything we know about the importance of female access and what it means for the next generation, this is the most regrettable. And I would like to urge you to adopt a zero tolerance policy towards gender digital divides. In light of this, I'm particularly looking forward to the outcomes of the working group on the digital gender divide, and we had a very good meeting yesterday. We will receive some briefings on the result. Distinguished uh, commissioners, empowering people through broadband can enable them to make the most of their opportunities and offers answers to some of today's most pressing problems, including broad problems of uh, migration, social conflict and climate change, but also changing mindsets and transforming attitude, attitude, uh, attitude, especially to women. However, as our most uh, recent state of uh, broadband report of the Commission's connectability targets 
makes clear there are considerable challenges involved in connecting people with the broadband. As I mentioned, the target for household in developing countries with access to the internet was achieved this year, actually, uh, last year, 2015. Household internet penetration for developing countries increased from 37.6% in 2015, when we achieved our goals, now again, up to 41.1% in 2016. And yet, it is unclear that target 1.1 will be achieved by 2020 that globally 55% of households should have access to the internet. So we, uh, we just mentioned this 41% uh, to move to 55% in a couple of years. That is really a challenge. In Dubai, we discussed the possibility of renewing targets, which commissioners were broadly enthusiastic about. So we need a reasonable targets to achieve our own goals on what is feasible to achieve by 2020 or and 2021. And then how can we meet these targets? According to the ITU Connect Target 1.2 target, 60% of the global population should be using the internet by 2020, broadly equivalent to bringing another 1.5 billion people online. But uh, what are the challenges involved in accomplishing this? Let us try our best. We still have some time, though not very much. We still have opportunities to reach those goals by 2020. I would be very pleased if we could have some discussions on this point during this meeting. In this one, I would like to advise you that ITU would like to work with members and partners within the UN, as well as with anyone who could help us to build a coalition around SG9 to ensure that the broadband is at the forefront of people's minds when they discuss infrastructure and innovation. From these fundamental efforts, we can target SDGs where broadband can have a major and immediate impact such as SDGs 3, 4 on health and education, or longer term positively impact such as SDGs 11 and 13 on smart cities and climate actions. I will have further discussions with you and I count on your support. Ladies and gentlemen, turning to today's agenda, the first session this morning, building on broadband to leave no one behind. Moderated by Matt Greenyard, Director General of GSMA. We have covered the vital rule of broadband for achieving the sustainable development goals in health and education, as well as some of the important development going on right now at the UN level. The second session this morning, investing US 450 billion in broadband to connect 1.5 billion people by 2020, will be chaired by Dennis Obian of Degisel, who so generously hosted our 2014 spring session, and will continue their conversations the commissions began at the World Economic Forum in Davos early this year. And for this, uh, you know, yesterday we, we, we had some, uh, some kind of discussions and this morning with, uh, with uh, also with uh, Carlos, and Carlos has some comments that uh, these 450 millions, where to find these 450 millions, and, uh, and he believed that uh, uh, private sector will invest a lot, and uh, we are even more uh, than this uh, uh, amount we just talked about. So I think that he will give us uh, his ideas later. We will also be hearing from representatives of the working group of the commissions with an update on their progress.